basic form if I can tell you. It is a way of classification in biology through which you can classify organisms on the basis of their physical appearance. So if you look at the definition, it is an attempt to classify organism based on morphology. Now morphology is nothing but physical appearance or another name is observable traits. Now these uh, classifications are done regardless of their evolutionary relationship. This is something that we need to keep in mind about phonetics. So if I say uh, and I try to explain in a layman's language, it's actually I can compare a horse and I can compare a giraffe in phonetics based on certain observable characters which are similar in both the species, right? For example, the presence of a tail right presence of four legs and then um, you know having uh, ears having this kind of shape of uh, face you know skeletal shape something like that so I can use all of these traits to kind of relate both of these organisms now the results of a phonetic relation that I finally um, you know I, we choose two species and then we uh, map the traits that are similar and dissimilar and then these relations are summarized in a phenogram this is an example of a phenogram now phoneticists are the people who make phenograms right so while making phenograms there are certain steps that have to be followed so number one would be the very obvious one select the individual for study any species of plant or animal could be selected and this is known as an operational taxonomical unit or OTU second is selection of characters this means like what kind of characters you want in your slide it could be like tail or it could be you know eyes it could be anything that you would want depending on the organism selected now description of character states now character states is something different from character this means whether a trait is present or if it is absent okay this is how we describe characters and then finally we have to compare these character states in which species this is present and which species that particular character is absent so for an example we're going to construct a phenogram we're going to construct a phenogram so for that i have taken an example of five species of bugs over here these are my species of bug i've named them a b c d and e and over here i've taken 10 different character traits that we will be comparing within these five species okay we'll start with the first one pointed nose okay and over here mind present and absent is the character state that is defined okay so number one is pointed nose if you observe carefully all of my bugs have pointed noses presence of four legs yes all of my four uh, five bug species have legs four of them then toes on legs this is something that is not present in all of them uh, a b and c have toes on their legs if you see this small hair like structures are actually their toes whereas d and e don't have it now fifth one triangular shield on the back it's evident that only a has it and no other species has it okay then if we take antenna covered with hair so they look striped if you notice carefully only c has this feature okay antenna is thick so thick antenna is in a and c only and the other has hair like antenna so this way you can actually uh, check the character states and see in what species which character is present and which is not okay now the information that we uh, have done in the previous slide it can be recorded in a kind of a table of this kind you can either tell whether a particular character is present or absent in the form of using plus or minus signs plus indicating that it's present and minus indicating that it's absent or if this is not okay then you can also use a one and zero form 
one indicating that the trait is present and zero indicating that it's absent. So if we remember that all of my species had four legs, right? Character number two was present in all of them. Whereas third was not present in B and E, which was present of toes, right? So this way I have tried and put it in a form of a table for an easy calculation that we'll be dealing later on. Calculations is something, uh, kind of a coefficient that we have to calculate in order to understand the similarity between any two species at a time. So we know that coefficient or the similarity coefficient can be uh, calculated for two species at a time only and not more than this. So if I take the example of species A and B and I try and see what were the uh, traits similar in both of them, okay? So uh, I see 1 is similar, 2 is similar, 3 is similar, 6, 7, 8 and 10. These are the 5, no wait, it's 7, 7 similar character traits are found between A and B. Okay, so now how do I calculate this index? This is the simple formula given right over here. The character traits that are common. So between A and B, I had seven traits that were common divided by total number of characters. I had 10 different characters selected, right? So 7 by 10, which is nothing but 0 0.7. Okay, or you can also uh, make it into a percentage by multiplying this number by 100. So you are going to get 70% similarity existing between taxa A and taxa B. Okay. Similarly, this particular exercise can be con uh, constructed and done between A and E, B and C, uh, D, D and E, C and E, etc. etc. Okay. Okay, so over here in this particular slide, I have tried to note down all the similarities between each species, right? So in this one, I have noted down, okay, one more thing, most people don't understand is this part. What is this? This means A is 100% similar to A. I think this is very much uh, more of a common sense kind of a thing rather than understanding, right? And then the next line i have given similarity between a and b it is 0.7 or 70 percent similarity between a and c is again 70 percent a and d is 40 percent a and e is again 40 percent now similarly you can check for d also similarity between a and d d and b d and c d and e okay so this is a reference table for those who were uh, struggling to check their answers so you can check your answers with this so now we can demonstrate these coefficients in a matrix this is a matrix right here okay now most people don't understand how to read it what are these numbers what are these dashes so for that first of all please clear your mind remove all the doubts that you have and listen clear carefully okay these dashes are nothing but just write number one over here okay just writing number one this will make things very very clear now why did i do this see a is hundred percent similar to a right this is what i did over here now a is 70% similar to B, right? A is 60% similar to C. Wait, 70%. I'm really sorry. A is 40% similar to D. And A is again 40% similar to E. This one. I hope you're noticing my arrows over here and noticing my checkpoints over here this is how you know what this table is trying to say okay now let's try for another one now let's see for 
D. Okay, so D is hundred percent similar to D. D is fifty percent similar to. Wait, yes, D is fifty percent. This is the tracing line to C. Okay, then D is seventy percent similar to B, and D is forty percent similar to A. Right here, all of this. Okay, so this is how we read this matrix. I hope everybody understood. And this is, it's always better to keep this kind of a sheet in the beginning when you're trying and understanding the reading of matrix. And then once you're understood and well versed with it, then you no longer need this table. Now, how do we construct a phenogram? Remember the bug example we were following all this time? I will teach you how to construct a phenogram for that. Okay. It's very simple. Now the very first thing you have to do in your notebooks is draw this scale right here. Okay, I'll tell you what is the significance of this scale after some time. Just draw this first. Okay, and then the next step would be to select. Now how do I know which are the first two species? How do I know that I have to put B and C and D and E only over here? Why not any other combination? Or why not A? Where is A over here? Why is it missing? Right. So for that we have a logical explanation. In our table if you see I have permanently marked red circles right here. This indicates that I have to put these species. Now, how did I select them, right? Actually, if you check in the entire table, among all the uh, coefficients, 0 0.8 is the highest coefficient. So, what we do, we relate those species having the highest coefficient among them. So, B and C had the highest. This and this is almost the same thing. And this and this is the same thing, right? So that's why I wrote B and C and I connected them at 0 0.8. Okay, this is this uh, ruler or kind of a scale that I told you. This shows the coefficient values between the species. Okay, so I connected them at 0 0.8. Similarly, D and E uh, were connected at 0 0.8. Okay, this is your first step and this very step is written over here as well. Now step 2 is we link the next most similar taxa that is from the similarity table we see that 70% is the next highest cluster right but we also know that there is a tie that comes up right whether I should join A to B and C because A was this very much similar to B and C or should I join D E meaning this one to B or and leave A as an independent species right there like what should be done right so for this kind of a situation we always take the average okay so what we do if we join A to B and C it will cluster at 70% meaning this will be the coefficient with B and C see A to B is 70 A to C is 70 and when we take the average of these two numbers it is again 70 Right, but if we had the choice to join B to D and E cluster, we must include C also, right? We have to include C because B and C are linked together. So we'll take the average of all the possible ones. So D and B, D and C, E and B, E and C. And then when we take the average, it is 0 0.6. So among both the averages, whichever is the higher average is the one that is preferred. Okay. So 0 0.7 was the higher one. So over here you can see that I have joined A to B and C. Okay. Now we know that D and uh, E cluster must be linked to A because that was the next highest after 0 0.7 that was linked right here. The next highest was among around uh, 0 0.6 right so this is done by finding the average of and now we know that there is no other species that we have to link together anymore we have to find the link where this point right here 
and this point meet right how do we know that it exactly meets at 0.5 around around it's not exactly 0. .5.